there and then it's one piece that's duplicated multiple times. So a lot of the times for spiral staircases, this technique might actually not be what you want and what you might want to do is um, a duplicate special for that. But what I'll show you here today is how to create a staircase when the staircase is all in one object right here and how to create a curved surface like this using deformations. So I am just going to hide all this. And I'm just selecting those objects and pressing H right there. And I'll start from the beginning here. So I guess I still have my light set up right here. I'll go ahead and hide this as well. And I'm not going to use reference for this. So usually I use reference for everything I model here, but this is more so you can get the concept of how to model this, this kind of object here. So with this model, this falls under the category where I start with a flat plane and model it two dimensionally and then extrude it out into three dimensions here. So I start with a polyplane, just clicking right there. And I'll press R on my keyboard or this button right here and just scale from the center to scale it up some. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the silhouette of a staircase here by right clicking and going to faces and deleting the faces to subtract out the, the negative space for the staircase. And before we do that though, need to think about how many steps you want this to be here. So by default, if I create a plane, I think it's 10 by 10 right here. So this will be 10 steps. If you want more or less steps, go to the attribute editor, go to the third tab, polyplane two right here. And it might be polyplane one for you. And um, change the subdivisions here. So right now it's 10 by 10. If I wanted 16 steps, I would move it up to 16 and 16 right there. Or if I wanted less, I would bring these numbers down right here. So this is the attribute editor under tab three. For this demo, I will just have it at 12 and 12 right here. And stairs are usually not square like this. They're, they're usually just a little bit um, longer than they are tall so that your feet can have a place to kind of work here. And I'm just going to call this demo. And what I like to do is I like to move out of my perspective view by tapping spacebar, go over to my top view, just hold my cursor over and tap spacebar once more. And oops, looks like I, I scaled it the wrong way. Here we go. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and go to face mode right here. And what I like to do is so I'm going to draw the staircase. So this is going to be the top and this is going to be the bottom step right here. And what I like to do is I like to hold shift and drag and select like this and just kind of go one by one down the stairs right here. So one really important tip here on doing this is when you hold shift, you can select more and more faces right here. But watch this. Watch when I hold shift and then I drag, and then some of my space that I'm dragging my cursor goes into an already selected space. So I'm holding down shift and I drag, and you think it's going to highlight all the boxes. But look, it, it um, unselects the boxes that it drags over that were already selected. So one thing you can do, and this is the same whether you're on a Mac or a PC, is you just hold down Control and Shift at the same time. And you see a little plus comes up next to my cursor. And when you hold down Control and Shift, it doesn't matter where your cursor goes. It's always just going to keep adding and adding, and it never subtracts. Whereas if I were to do the same thing just by holding Shift oops, like this, you see it unselects those areas right there. So remember, you can hold Control and Shift just to make sure that you're getting positive selections each time. And I'm selecting like this, and I'm going to delete these faces to create my the side view of my staircase right here. So all I did was I created a plane. I set the number of subdivisions in the attribute editor to how many steps I wanted the staircase to have. I right-clicked and went to face mode. And then I dragged it and, and selected these faces right here. And then when you have them selected, you just press delete. And you have the side of your sta staircase here. So I'll tap spacebar, tap spacebar, and we've got our side view right here. So from here, I'm still in face mode, and we can either do this in face mode or in object mode right here. But I'll stay in face mode just to kind of promote healthy habits here. And what I'm going to do is so I'm selecting all the faces that are left, and then I'm going to go over to the modeling toolkit, which for you might be over here or it might be at the top. So the modeling toolkit. 
and I'm looking for the extrude button. And I press extrude. And I'm just looking for the blue arrow. So I'm not messing with the scale tools or any of these other arrows. I'm just going to extrude it out like this into three dimensions. And make sure that your object appears gray when you drag it. If it appears black when you drag it, it just means that it's inside out right now. So I'll just press it and undo. And we have the beginning of our staircase right here. So now I'll right click and go to objects mode and press W. And you can see that my anchor point is at a strange spot right there. So to kind of get this on the level here, what I'd like to do, because you see my anchor point is kind of in this odd spot, and I want to flip this 90 degrees so that it's right side up here. But if I were to try to rotate this from this anchor point, I mean, I guess it's fine. Um, you can, I'll give you two options here. So you can just go ahead and um, press E on your keyboard for rotate or press this button right here. And then if you hold down J, so rotate so you can see this handle right there. So hold down J and then it snaps by 15 degrees and then you can just get it right at 90 degrees right there and right side up. Um, one thing I wanna do is I just wanna go ahead and have this level with my grid here because this grid is gonna be my floor plane right here. So you don't have to do this, but I think this could be helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my anchor point to the bottom of the steps and, and center it here. So I'll do this in two steps here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press um, this button right here, which is center pivot. So this is going to just take my pivot point or my anchor point and put it right in the middle of my object right there. So again, it's this button right here. You can also go to modify and then center pivot. So that does the same thing right there. And now I'm just going to tap space bar and let's see here. So this is my front view. Let me just test that. Okay. So I'm going to go over to my front view. I'll press D as in dog and then hold down V. So I just tap D to go into this changing anchor point mode right here. And then I'll hold down V as in vampire here, and it snaps it to relevant points on my model. So I'm just snapping it right to the edge of my model right there. So again, I just held down V. And then when I'm done, I'll just press this button or press Q to go back into selection mode. And so now, oh, whoops, <laughs> I did it to the wrong point. OK, so let's do that again. So I hold down D. I'm going to stay in my perspective view this time and hold down V. So I press D, hold down V, and then just snap it to the bottom edge of that. And so now when I rotate it, let's see here, I'll hold down J. And my anchor point is snapped to the bottom of my staircase. And what I can do now is if I hold down Let's see here, X on my keyboard. So again, I'm on W. I'm sorry, I'm making this more complicated than it needs to be, but these shortcuts are really helpful here. So if I hold down X on my keyboard, it snaps my model to the grid right here. You see how it's snapping at one centimeter at a time. The grid is in centimeters here. And it snaps it right there. So right there, I just snapped my staircase right to the, the floor plane right there. And this goes a lot quicker when you're used to it and you're not kind of sitting there explaining it, if that makes sense. And let's see here. And I'm just going to move this manually back towards the middle of the scene right here. And we're ready to go here. So I have my staircase. I'm going to press R because I just want it to be a little bit wider right there. And right here, if you just all you want is a staircase, then we are a very basic kind of low poly staircase. Then we have it right here. So let's kind of continue to build this out in some more detail though. So most steps have a little bit of, of a bevel to each step because the carpenter is, um, they have the floorboards that they're kind of putting on top of this and they jut out and they bevel out a little bit. So let me show you a trick to help create that here. So I'm gonna go to the multi-cut tool and when you hold down the multi-cut tool, remember so far we haven't really gone over how to manually draw it in because that's going to come later. But if you, oops, if you 
hold down control on your keyboard, you can see that you can create edge loops right here and you just click and it creates an edge loop for you right there. But if you look at my cursor, you see how there's a percentage sign next to it right there. So you can hold down um, control and shift and you see it snaps by 10 degrees right there. And so I can create edge loops that are gonna be proportional on each step here just by holding down control and shift. And you can set the snap percentage right here with the slider right here. So I have it set at 10%. And that's kind of where I like it to be here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap spacebar, go into my, I guess it's my front view here. And I'm going to hold control and shift. And I'm just going to create a step at 80% for each step right here. So I'm just holding control and shift. And just, oops, might help. One thing I could do is I could just take my snap percentage and then bring it to 20% right here. And it'll make it a little bit easier for me there. So 80% for each one. Oh, whoops. It looks like I created an edge loop by mistake when I was explaining it. Okay, so control and shift. Here we go. And you want these steps to be proportional to one another here. So it's important not to um, all these shortcuts that I'm showing here and things like that are really crucial to kind of create a staircase because these inorganic objects, you know, the carpenters in real life are really measuring this out and you don't want to just be manually drawing in those steps right there. So when I'm done, I'll press Q and we have these edge loops right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select each of these faces right here that I'm highlighting red right there and extruding them forward. So I'm just going to right click, go to face mode, and I'm going to hold down shift. Oops, hold down shift and select each step right here. Like that. And I like to press four just to make sure that I didn't select any steps by mistake and then press five to return. And I'm just going to press extrude and bring them forward a little bit. So extrude, blue arrow forward a little bit and we have those steps right there. And if I wanted just a little bit more detail here, um, usually when I create edge loops, I want them to go all the way around so that I avoid creating indents here. But um, I'm not sure if that's going to be actually important here. So this is going to be, um, sorry, I'm just thinking to myself here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select edge, and I'm just going and selecting these edges right here, one at a time, going forward. And I'm definitely going to need to do that step where I press four after this, just to make sure that I didn't select any other edges by mistake here. So I'll press four. And that looks good. I'm just looking for orange edges out here. It's a little hard to see, but I think I got it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bevel this and just round these out a little bit. So I'm going to press bevel and you can see I might even add a segment right here because I'm not see the reason I'm doing this or I'm able to do this where I have you see this is an ingon right here, but I'm not planning on smoothing this model here. So and I'm not planning on rigging this model, so it's actually going to be OK. And so I'm just going to give it three segments. It rounds it out. I might make the fraction a little bit smaller right there. I'm going to press Q. And we have a staircase now with these rounded floorboards right there. And so that's going to look a lot better. These details really add up on these things. So I'm just going to press this button so the wireframe remains projected onto the model so you can kind of see where the topology is on this model right now. You can see it gets denser with those beveled spots right there. And so now we have a fully formed staircase right here that'll work. Um, so to kind of continue to add on to this demonstration here, I want to show you how to deform this and give it some curvature. So if you're working on kind of like a ballroom staircase or something like that. So in order to do that, we're going to use lattices. But before we do that, I need to create some geometry this way so that the, when we deform the model, it has some information to work with here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to, I'm going to use a tool that's like the multi-cut, but it's just a variation of it. And it's under this window up here called Mesh Tools. 
And I'm just going to break off the mesh tools window just by pressing this double dotted line right here, right at the top. So you see that breaks off the menu right there. Let me do it one more time. So mesh tools, and then I'm just going to break off the menu by clicking right there. And the tool that I like is it's called the insert edge loop tool. And it's a really nice variation on the multi-cut tool. And whenever I'm creating new edge loops, I'm always either kind of going and using the multi-cut tool or the insert edge loop tool. The multi-cut tool is really useful for instance like instances like what we're just doing with the the bevels on the staircase, or sorry, the floorboards on the staircase with these edges right here, because you can do some cool things like set the percentages and some things like that. And then insert edge loop tool is another way of creating edge loops that has just a different set of advanced functions that you can choose between. So insert edge loop tool, I'm going to go to the pop-up window box to the right of it. And what I'm going to do is I think by default, it might look something like that for you. So I'm just going to go down to multiple edge loops right here. And what this is going to do is you see how my cursor looks a little different right now. It doesn't have the stem at the bottom of the cursor. That means that we're in edge loop mode. And if I were to click right now, I would get 14 edge loops all evenly spaced across the model right here. So if and if I slide this down, it would be nine edge loops right there. So I will bring it to 12 right here. And then I'm just going to watch this. So when I click, you see right there, it's going to create 12 evenly spaced edge loops going across the model in each direction right there. So again, I want to insert edge loop tool, went to the pop up box. I changed it to multiple edge loops use equal multiplier, and then the edge loops just set the number that you want right here. I'm choosing 12, and I just click right there, and it creates it for you. So I can close this out, and that's one example of how the insert edge loop tool can be really helpful. It can also be really helpful when we get to character modeling. So um, now we have our model, and it's kind of ready to begin with the, the curving. So I'm selecting my model right here. It's called demo one down here. And remember my outliner is a little crowded because I had my old project up there. And I'm just going to save this in case it crashes. And what you want to do is, so you select your model and then you go to deform up at the top and then you're going to look for lattice. So lattice is right here. And there is a pop-up box for it, but I'm actually, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to click right on where it says Lattice right here. So select your model in objects mode, go to Deform and then Lattice. And it should create a box going around your model. And the way that this box works, and you can see in the outliner, it creates a Lattice and then a Lattice base right there. And the way this box works is whatever changes you make to this box, any squishes that you do on it or anything like that is going to uh, squish the model that it's attached to. And so I'm going to go to my attribute editor with a lattice selectum. And then I'm going to look for the second tab right here. And you can see right here. So again, I, I'm selecting my lattice, which is right there or right here. And make sure your lattice base is not is not what's selected. And you can see that I have two subdivisions right here. If I drag the slider up, whoa, there we go, to 11, you can see that that adds subdivisions going across this way. And so what I want is I want three going up my staircase like this. And I don't really want any subdivisions for what I'm doing anywhere else. So I'm going to set it so that it's two, two, and three. And you want that one extra lattice right here in the middle of your staircase going around like that. And so what you're going to do now is you're going to right click and go to lattice point. And you can see you have these lattice points right here, which look like vertices. And if you drag and select like this and then press W, you can see that it deforms your staircase right there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag and select all four of those. I'm going to press R on my keyboard or the scale button right here and just scale them in like this. And then maybe that's a little bit too much. And then I'll drag and select these vertices right here, or sorry, lattice points. And again, you get to lattice points by having your lattice selected and then right clicking and going to lattice point right there. Oops. Is So I'll select these back ones right there. 
and then I'll do the same thing where I scale them in. I'm just trying to create a curved staircase. It's going to look a little Minecrafty at this point, you know, a little faceted at this point. So there's a step that I haven't done yet where we're going to smooth out our work here. So again, I'm grabbing four lattices at a time here. And I'm just going to scale this out. OK, so oops, didn't mean to do that. OK, so you can see right here that I've deformed my staircase right here. But you can see this edge is a little harsh in there. And so there's another step I need to do to round this out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go straight to where it says FFD1 right here. So we were working on the second tab right here on the lattice. And we set it to 322. And depending on how your staircase is, it, the three might show up in a different one of these. And But you just want to make sure it goes down the middle of your staircase like that. And now I'm going to go to the third tab, which is FFD1. and Let's see here. I believe it's going to be this slider right here. So I'm just going to take, as I drag this up right here, you see it rounds out my model right there. So this is what it was like before. And it might be a different one of these sliders for you. So if it's not working on this top slider, just try a different slider and see if it works for you. And remember, we're under FFD1 right there. And I bring the slider up, and I'll bring it up to 12, because that's, I don't know, the magic number I've been working with today. And you can see it rounds out the model. So now I'll right click, go back to objects mode, and I have a rounded staircase right here. So um, that's how you create a rounded staircase. And if you remember on the model, I had some other components going on on this. So I'll, I will just kind of continue to work to show you some, some extra steps we can do on this. So if you're happy with your staircase and you don't want to, and you know you don't want to adjust it again, you can um, delete this lattice and keep moving, although we need to do it a specific way right here. So for instance, if I were to select this lattice, let me save this. If I were to delete my lattice right now, you see my model snaps back to right where it was. So I'll press Edit Undo. So you don't want to delete your lattice, but you can, and again, if you feel like you're done with your model, you don't want to make any more adjustments to the physical shape of it, you can select your model and then go to Edit, delete by type and history right here. And what it's going to do is it's going to take what you did with your lattice and make it permanent right here. And so you see the lattice disappeared, but the model this time didn't snap back to its square form right there. So this model is uh, real now. It's, it's, you know, it's fully in there and the deformer is not, not present anymore. The deformer did its work right here. So remember you can do that, but once you do that, I can't go in and kind of make the a lot of the changes with the lattice anymore and stuff like that. So right here, I have my staircase. Let's go ahead and make a floor for this. And remember, I snapped this to the bottom the bottom plane when I was kind of fumbling around a little bit with the the snapping the anchor point here. So this will be right along the floor here. So to create a floor, I'm just going to create another plane. Press R on my keyboard and just scale it out like that. And now I have a floor. And since this is just going to be a flat floor, I don't need all those subdivisions in this. So I'll just go ahead in the attribute editor and go to the third tab and just bring this down to one and one because I'll just do two and two because we don't need that information right there. One thing to remember here is in Maya, every face that you have right here is just one more piece of information that you're CPU is going to have to continue to work with when you're rendering and things like that. So wherever you can kind of keep geometry low, it's a good idea to try to do so here. So with a flat floor, you don't really need a lot, as long as it's not going to be tiled or anything like that. So um, one thing, a really important tip, which is a little bit of an aside right here, is I bet if I were to render this right now, I'm going to unhide my lights right here. So I just had created some area lights right here bef before. And if I go to render, let me set up my angle like this, Arnold render. This looks pretty good. Um, and it kind of depends on your model a little bit here. The lighting is helping me out in this particular instance. Let me see if it changes when I go over here. But um, one thing that's a good habit to get into is 
you want your models typically not to overlap with the floor having like a little bit of a shadow underneath your models and it's just a really small shadow just helps separate it from the floor and make things look a little more realistic here and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tap spacebar i'm going to use my i guess it's my side view right here so you can see oh i already did it that's why it looks all right is um i have my floor plane right here and you can see that my model there's just a little bit of let me press f there's a tiny bit of space between my model and the floor right there. You see that? So what you don't want to do typically with this kind of thing is have them overlap like this, because what happens is a shadow doesn't form underneath your object. Let's see what this looks like when I render this. Again, because of the lighting, this is probably not going to be too bad. Um, but essentially, especially in most forms of lighting, you're going to get the best kind of renders right here if you just and it just it can be just a tiny amount of space but you can see there's a little bit of space between my floor and my staircase right there so continuing to move here i'm going to create a railing for this using deformers once more and so in once i create the railing i'm going to use the um mirror tool to mirror it from one side to the next so the first thing i need to do is I need to grab my staircase and I just need to center it a little bit. So um, because of my process, I'm not going to be exact with this, but I'm just kind of by eye, just making sure that this is kind of centered along this axis right here. And you don't need to be exact with this, but, um, you know, just kind of approximate it here. Okay. Because what we're going to do is we're going to create a railing on one side that's going to curve. And then we're going to duplicate it over to the other side and uh, using the mirror, something called mirroring here. And it's going to mirror across this axis that is um, right there. So, um, OK, so to create the railing, I'm going to start by creating a polycube right here. So I'm just going to click on the polycube. It's not going to show up at first because it's underneath the staircase. So I'm just going to I'm going to model it on the right side right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm scaling it this way. So I'm just grabbing this for me, this yellow box, just to scale it in that direction right here. And I'm going to bevel this at a certain point here just to give this a little bit of roundedness, because again, things look so much more realistic in these kinds of objects if there's a little more geometry rounding it out right here. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to use the deformer because I want it to curve along the staircase right here. And so what I need is I need more geometry so that it can curve along that surface right there. So a really, really important step here is I created my rectangle and I just scaled it to be long, like a railing here. And then I'm going to press um, in the attribute editor on the third tab, I'm going to add some more subdivisions to it. And... I guess for me, it's going to be the subdivision width, and I'm going to add subdivisions this way. And I'll add, um, let's add, oops, 14 is probably good here. So I'm going to add 14 subdivisions right here. And just, it's going to, it might change if your staircase is facing a different way, but again, you just want 14 subdivisions going along this way right here. And so now what I'm going to do is so I have enough geometry that way. And now what I'm going to get, go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and bevel this so that it um, has a good shape to it. So I'm going to right click and go to face. And what I'm going to do here is, so I'm right clicking and going to face mode. Where is it? Right there. I'm going to just hold shift and uh, click and select that kind of edge loop of faces right there. So again, I'm just clicking right this face right here and then holding shift and double clicking the next face over either to the left or to the right and it creates that whole edge loop but one really important step is i need to deselect this face right here that i have selected green and then the other one on the other side that's uh, across from it so i'm just holding control on my keyboard and clicking right there to deselect and i'm going to go over to the other side hold control deselect and now that i have those faces selected it's going to create a bevel going around each of those sets of faces right there. So I'll go to the modeling toolkit 
go down to the bevel button right here. And as the initial bevel is going to look like that, I want to make some adjustments to it here. So I'm going to make the fraction much smaller. So let's say I'm going to do 0.25 here for this. Then I'll add, I'm not going to smooth this, I don't think. So I'm just going to add three sub segments to it. And now when I right click and go to objects mode, I have a nice banister here that's a little rounded out. So now that I have that, I'm going to position this. And then once I have it positioned, I'll start using the, the lattice deformer in the same way that I was using the staircase before. So I'll tap spacebar, and I like to use the orthographic views to help myself line things up. So I'm going to go to the, the front view right here. And I'm just going to use each of these four views to help line this thing up. So I'll press E on my keyboard. And using the front view, I'm going to rotate this this way, move it up. And again, I'm just going to create a railing here. You can see in my initial model, I'd, I'd done this a few times over here to create something more elaborate. But in this case, I'm just going to start with the railing. So I'm kind of in the front view, I'm positioning it there. Then I'm going to press R on my keyboard to scale it just to make it a little bit longer right there. If when you scale it, make sure that your scale tool is going along the model right there. If it's not going along the model and it's facing kind of in 90 degree directions right here, all you need to do is just double click on the scale tool right here and make sure that the axis orientation is in object mode rather than world mode. So you can see this is world mode right here and it scales it that way. And if you want it to be relative to the direction your model is actually facing, you just click this tab and go to object right there, and it switches to that view right there. So I have it lined up from the front view. Now I need to rotate it so that it lines up from the top view right here. And I'm just approximating it because we're going to use the lattice tool to deform it fully into position here. So I'm just pressing E for the rotate tool. And it might help me if I put wireframe on shaded so that I can so it's this button right here so I can see the models a little bit better here. And we're not we don't have to be like completely exact with this because again we can use the lattice deformer here to help out with some of this. But I'm trying to line up this point right here with this point with a staircase like that. And then also have it line up this way up here as well. It's going a little bit too far in this to the left here. So I'm just scaling it into position. Now I'm looking at it from the side view. That largely looks OK to me. And OK, so this looks all right to me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this. So what do we have here? So this is the floor. So I'm going to name that floor. And I have my railing here. So I'm just going to call this railing one right there. And I like to name it because I'm going to make multiple of these. And I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this. So I'm going to press Command D and then hide the duplicate by pressing H. Just you know, in case something messes up, I have a backup of it. Sometimes I like to do that. So. I have this, but I need to curve it along my curved surface right here. So to do this, I'm going to repeat the process I did with the staircase right here. So I'm just going to select this model in object mode of the railing. And then I'm going to go up to deform. Same thing, going down to lattice right here. And this is what's going to look a little different. It's going to, since the staircase is a more modeled object, the box that's created around it had some empty space, so it was really easy to see the lattice. Since the railing is essentially a box or a rectangle, the lattice forms directly around it. So it's a little hard to see it at first, but you can see these green lines that go around it right here, indicating that a lattice was created. You can also see it right there. And so I'm just, my lattice is selected here in my outliner, and I'm going to go over to my attribute editor. Same thing as before, where I click on the second tab that says FFD1 lattice shape. And it has five subdivisions going vertically across the lattice, which I don't really need. So I'm going to bring that down to two. And same as before, I just need lattice subdivisions going this way right here. So I'm just going to bring that up to 
For this one, I'm going to do four. So before I did three for the staircase, because I just needed a really simple curve with the railing, just so I have a little more customization available, I'm going to do four subdivisions here. Then I'm going to right click. Oops. If you hold on right click and it looks like this, that just means that you see where I held down my right click, this little circle is where my right click was initially pressed, was on top of the model itself. So you might just need to hold your cursor so that it's right above the lattice itself, right click and go to lattice point right there. And what I'm gonna do is same as before, where I'm just gonna select these lattices. I might use my orthographic view to help me out here. And I'm just going to grab my lattices like this. So I'm dragging and selecting a box like that and creating a curve right here. And I just grabbed these and dragged them inward, grab those, drag them inward, and this one's looking OK. And again, this is going to look a little faceted because we haven't gotten to step two here yet. So if you want to go ahead and get rid of that faceting of my lattice selected, we were on this tab right here. I'm just going to go to the FFD1 tab, click right there. Um, OK, and so it should be the top slider right here on FFD1 that smooths it out right there. So I'm just going to bring this up to 10. And you can see it rounds it out for us here. And you can continue to make adjustments here to curve out your railing here. So just try to focus on the model that's underneath right there. I think that looks OK. And you can also, you can you can make your railing longer right here. So this is why it's not, you know, we don't have to get the railing absolutely perfect before um, setting it here. Whoa. I can also, you can see right here, I can set my the edge of my railing. So initially, my railing was set at that angle right there. And this rotate tool is set in world mode. And it might be helpful for it to be in objects mode. So I'm just going to double click on the rotate button right here. So I just double click on it to bring up this window right here. And same as I was doing before with the scale, I'm going to switch this to object mode. And you can see that the rotate tool is now relative to the object itself. And one thing that's nice here is using the lattice points, I can drag and select it and have the railing kind of come up to more of a proper um, 90 degree angle right here, just by clicking and dragging it right there. Um, and I could do the same up here with these lattice points right there. Press F to focus in on it, frame it up. And you don't need to do this. This just might be a helpful detail here. So I'll press Q to get out of that. And I have a railing here. So my plan is I'm going to mirror this over. And I created a duplicate a minute ago. I'm not sure if I needed that duplicate. So that, that was it right here. So I'm just going to delete that. So I have my railing. And what I need to do is I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm just going to save this real quick. And I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror this from this side of my object over to the left side of the object. So the first thing I need to do is um, remember this lattice is still there. So assuming that we're happy with this railing right here, um, I'm going to press, um, let's see here. Edit, delete by type, and history right here. And that's going to get rid of the lattice, and it's going to kind of set this thing in stone. So I press edit, delete by type, history. And so now the railing is a kind of a real model, just like what we did before with the staircase. And so here's a new tool here, is I'm going to go and mirror this from the right side over to the left side. So um, to do that, it's, it's actually this button right here for you. That's the mirror button. So if you're ever having trouble finding it, you can press this. And if, I think if you hold, um, let me see here. Yeah, so if you click it, for me, it kind of just immediately works right here. But notice that there's some options in here. Let's see here. And so the main thing that throws people off right here, so again, it's this button right here, and it mirrors it from one side to the other. It's also, you can find it under mesh and then mirror right there. So mesh and mirror. And one thing that can be really helpful is going to this pop-up menu box right here. 
and you get these options right here. But if you notice these options that are in that pop-up menu show up down here as well, when I just simply clicked the button. So I'm just gonna edit undo just to kind of go back to the original model right here. So I just have this and then I press this button right here, which is the, the mirror button right there. And you can see that it kind of immediately worked for me. And the important things to look at right here is I have cut geometry off. If it's on, it's not going to work right here. So I have it set to off. The axis position is world, meaning that it mirrors across the, um, the Z axis right here. You see, you see right here, this is my axis is right there. So the Z axis is going from left to right right there. So it's mirroring it from right to left right there. And it's in world. And so anyway, these options right here, you might need to kind of adjust in order to get this to work. So let me just press that and undo to get back. And so if it's not working for you immediately, maybe don't press on this button right here and just go up to mesh and then mirror and then options right here and kind of work through this, this option box. And then um, try these different options here and press apply. And if it doesn't work, just press edit and undo and try again here. So you can see for me, we want to create a copy. We do not want to cut the geometry for this particular example right here. In the future, we we will. But for when we're kind of mirroring it as a separate object, we want that unchecked. We're making a copy rather than an instance. And I'm going to flip it across the world because remember the world axis is right here through the middle of the staircase, which I kind of approximated, but you know, that works. If it were across the object right here, it would just kind of create a mirror, like the other object would kind of come up right there, which is not really what we want. So we want this to be across the world axis. In my case, I'm mirroring it across the Z axis. You can see the Z axis is this blue axis right here. So I'm doing it to the left right here. If your model is modeled in um, 90 degrees in another direction, you might need this to be the X axis right here. But for me, it's the Z axis. And this should be good. So when I press apply, you can see it creates a, a mirrored instance of it right there. And um, I'll see here. And since I've cut geometry set to off, it kind of what it does is it creates a separate model right here. So we can see we have railing three right here, and then we have railing one right there. So we have two separate railings right there. And that's how you kind of begin to build around the staircase. So you can create railings and things like that that um, fit the, the shape of your model right here just by continuing to use lattices and to, to shape it up right here. So for this example right here, let me just see how this looks is I could either duplicate my railing like this and kind of begin to work on a side bevel like this to my to my stairs, you know, because usually stairs don't just end like that, especially if they're fancy like this, you know, there'd be some kind of modeled object right here to the side just to kind of keep the stairs set across like that. So again, all I did was I duplicated this railing right here. I'll just do it again to show it. Let's see here. Okay, so I have this railing right here and I just press Command D or Edit and then duplicate right here. Press W and I dragged it down. And I'm just kind of manually putting it in position here. So I'm pressing R on my keyboard and I just make might make it a little bit taller. And it's going to be hard to scale it this way, I think, because it's going to change the curvature of it a little bit, I think. No, that's OK. Let's see. And then I'll just kind of bring it in. And what I want to avoid is I don't want any gaps in here. So I'm just manually positioning this. And notice here that I'm OK constructing 
a model of a staircase out of different objects right here. And the best way to think about it is if you are physically constructing this in real life, would your staircase be made of different pieces of wood? And the answer is yes, right? You know, this would these would be different pieces of wood right here. And so it's totally okay to model your object with that kind of philosophy right there. And so all again I did again is I duplicated this railing right here. And then I just dragged it down and I just in object mode I scaled it to kind of fit in this in this way right here. You can see we have this kind of ugly kind of um end to this railing right here. And so I'm gonna finish that. I'm gonna finish this up with some columns right there. So I'm just gonna select this railing right here. I'm gonna mirror it once more. And one thing that's nice about mirroring is it remembers your options from last time. So if you went through all the hubbub of going to mesh and mirror and then options and toying with these to get it right for your railings initially, it's gonna remember those settings. So now if I select this bottom railing right here, it'll definitely work right here. If you press this, this button right here, you can see it creates a railing directly on the other side of my staircase right there. And so we're starting to be in some pretty good shape right here. And so next up, I'm just going to create some really simple columns for the bottom of this. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to create a, a poly rectangle right here. And I'm just going to call this front column one right there. It's not showing up because it's underneath my model. So I'm just going to press W and bring it forth here. And I'm going to it's essentially going to go in front of these railings right here. And so I'm going to scale it up, scale it vertically. This is going to be a really simple column. So I'm not even going to bother with adding subdivisions into it right here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change my anchor point. So I'm going to tap D so that, you know, this is how you change your anchor point right there. And then I'm going to hold down V as in vampire and just snap it to the bottom of my model right there. So now my anchor point is on the bottom. And I'm going to go to my side view right here. And remember, if you and just moving it right here, if I hold down X, it's going to snap it to the grid right here. So I can just snap it real quick right to the bottom. And then once I snap it to the floor, I'm just going to drag it up just like a millimeter off the ground right here. So there's a little separation between it and the ground. And I'm going to position this in place and I am going to bevel this so that there's a little bit of roundedness here. But first I want to press R, sorry, E on my keyboard and just rotate it. So that it's kind of moving out in the correct direction. And I'm just manually putting it into place right here. And if I want to shrink it, since I did my anchor point set to the bottom of it, I can just do a, I can vertically scale it right here to bring it down. If you didn't change the anchor point right there and you want to scale it down, um, really simple, just right click, go to face mode, select this face this at the top, press W and just physically move it down right there. And I'm going to right click and go back to objects mode. And since this is um, normally you can't just bevel a whole object. Like for instance, if I took the staircase right here and pressed, went to the modeling toolkit and pressed bevel, a really bad result would happen here where every single edge right here would get beveled and it would cause some really weird faceting. But when you have a poly primitive, like a, like a rectangle, you can just go into right click and go to object mode and bevel it from here. So I'll just press bevel change the fraction way down to 0.1, add some segments to it because I'm not planning on smoothing it here. And I have a column right there in the foreground. And if I want to mirror this to the other side, remember that I had already done the work when I was creating my railings of going into the mesh mirror options and setting it to cut geometry off to the world axis across the Z axis right there. And Maya remembers it when you do that. So. Um, now, when I just press the mirror button right there, it automatically does it for me right there. So it's kind of doing my work for me. And, you know, I could kind of go through the work of creating 
individual columns right here, but I'm probably going to cut off our demonstration right here at this point because you can just kind of manually add these columns right here. And I'll show you some tricks down the road on how to evenly space your columns, kind of going up from stair to stair right here. Um, all right. And so now I have my lights visible on my scene right here. And so if I go to Arnold and render, you can see that I have a curved staircase with curved railings going across the side. And you can see that these columns that I created right here are kind of helping bring it to a point right here. Notice as well that these bevels that I added across the stairs are just kind of giving it that little bit of rounded detail across the top right there. And all these bevels, and remember I created bevels across here, across here. So there's a lot of bevels happening strategically on this and it helps round out your, your shape here to be um, a more realistic because um, once I put sky gnome lights on and materials onto this, there's gonna be lights gonna be able to hit these highlights right here. You can already see it happening on these bevels here, even though this object is still in Lambert mode. Um, and it's gonna make it a lot more realistic. And also even if it's cartoonish, if you're going for like a Pixar look or something like that, they also kind of have this rounded look here. So yeah, the bevel, the beveling pays off here. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna cut off this demo here and I'll continue to kind of show you techniques in the future to help do things like add railings onto this and add more and more onto your scene right here.